So far, we have briefly explored Solver SDK products and the features. Now let's find out how you can define a specific model in SDK in more detail. Let's start with a portfolio optimization application. In this problem, we are looking to find the optimal allocation of funds to stocks that minimizes the portfolio risk, measured by portfolio variance and subject to a minimum return constraint. Decision variables are the percentages to be allocated to each investment or asset class. Another constraint is the total portfolio constraint summing the allocations of funds to stocks which is summing to 100% or 1. In this problem, we need to compute the portfolio return and variance and the sum of the allocations for the budget constraint. In Excel, we could do this with Excel formulas. However, in SDK, we do this with an evaluator function. An evaluator is a callback function that computes values for the problem functions for any given values of the variables. The solver SDK will call this function repeatedly during the solution process. In a linear or quadratic problem, you can describe the objective and constraints with an array or matrix of constant coefficients. The solver SDK can determine values for the objective and constraints by computing the sum of products of the variables with the supplied coefficients. Using the evaluator is optional for these problems. However, in a nonlinear problem, the problem functions cannot be described this way. The coefficients represent first partial derivatives of the objective and constraints with respect to the variables. And these derivatives change as the values of the variable change. So using the evaluator is a must for nonlinear problems. In this quadratic example for illustration purposes, We'll practice using the evaluator function to pass the values for the problem objective and constraint functions. However, you can find the same problem in a standard examples without using a function evaluator and you can see that the solver SDK is supplied with the objective and constraint coefficient matrices using function quadratic. Let's review the code together. As you can see, I have used a Windows Form application and added a directive using Solver Platform. If you choose to forego the directive, then you must add Solver Platform to the beginning of each SDK function call. You need to make sure that a reference to access the methods and properties in the Solver SDK is set. This depends on your version of .NET. Your program should first create a new instance of the class problem. This line of code creates an instance of the problem class. I have added the variables using these two lines of code. The first line of code creates a variable block of type variable type decision, names the block var allocations, and then sets the size of the block to 5. The second line of code adds the var allocations variable block to the problem. To pass a lower bound of zero on any variable that doesn't currently have a lower bound, I have used var allocations dot non negative. In addition, I have added the constraints using these lines of code. The first line of code creates a function block of type function type constraint. I would call it the portfolio return constraint and then set the size of it to 1. Then I pass the lower bound of 9.5% to the SDK. Normally you get this data from some external source, a database, as user input or from some other part of your application. The next line of code adds the constraint portfolio return function block to the problem. Similarly, for the second constraint, the first line of code creates a function block 
names the block constraint total portfolio and then sets the size of the block to one. Then the lower bound and upper bound are set to one since this is an equality constraint. This line adds the constraint total portfolio function block to the problem. Then the objective function block portfolio variance is created and added to the problem. To tell the SDK to minimize the model, we use this line of code. Here is the function evaluator to supply the solver SDK with the functions. We create and pass the evaluator to the SDK. Then calling prop.solver.optimize solves the problem. Here, we want to display the solution status along with the final objective and variable values with multiple message boxes. The catch statement handles any exceptions. The code for our eval type function evaluator is written inside of this event handler. Here I declare this two-dimensional array of 5 by 5. These are the covariances between stocks. Then we create a convenient pointer, p, to the variables, constraints, and objective function. Here in this assignment statement, I am computing the portfolio return constraint. Then in the doubly nested loop, inside the first loop, I compute the second constraint total portfolio. Here I compute the objective function, which is the portfolio variance. It is important that when we calculate the values, we put them back in the evaluator problem functions. We are putting them back into the object that was passed in. Finally, we tell the SDK to continue optimizing by returning engine action continue. Now we can build and run the application. To compile and link this project, you can select Build, Build Solution. Now let's use Debug and start debugging. We can press the command button Solve to solve the example. Here are the results. To show you how SDK works, I have added a breakpoint in line 117 to inspect the variable values on each optimization iteration. Let's run it and click Solve. Now let's check our variable block var allocations values. Here are all the values. Let's hit the continue. The initial values are all zero. Again, I hit continue. Now we have come back in a new iteration and we get different values. Again, I hit continue button and get new set of values. Let's remove the breakpoint and click continue to run it to completion. Here are the results.